Okay, in today's session, we're going to talk about citation searching. Um, so this is going to kind of uh, build off of what we've done previously. Um, you know, to this point, we've sort of explored some general sources, some overview type of information about topics. Um, and then from there, we've uh, generated some searches, some keyword searches to um, locate some relevant sources that way. Um, this is another approach entirely. Um, and uh, this approach works great. Um, and it's a, a nice sort of limited um, way of approaching doing research. Um, sometimes with the keyword searching like we did last time, it can feel like the amount of information is so vast um, that it's it's hard to imagine being able to consider all of it, right? It's just so much. Um, and what's great about citation searching is that it kind of refocuses us um, down onto you know, some specific sources and we kind of build out from there. So um, it's it's a really helpful way of kind of having a nice limited sort of bounded um, kind of approach um, so that you're not just left with a huge amount of information and not really clear on which sources are going to be the most useful. This you kind of build out so um, you can take it as far as you want, but it, it is sort of limited, which is great. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, again, I'm going to use this whiteboard um to just kind of try and uh, draw this out a little bit for you so um citations are a really you know citations and references are a really really important thing in academic writing and academic publication um when authors do research on a particular topic um, those researchers will share the sources of information that they've used um and the idea behind that is that um, it's clear to the reader which ideas came from um, the, the sources that the authors read and used um, and which ideas are, were their own, right? Um, and it allows the reader to verify and confirm that, you know, the, those sources are actually saying the things that the, um, that the author says they're saying. Um, uh, and it also allows us to expand our search. Um, and we can expand in a couple of different directions. That What's great about um, the, the use of citation to sort of trace the origins of different ideas and, and different statements is that um, we can use that to sort of expand and grow our search out of a central point. Um, so what you need to do in order to do uh, citation searching, you're going to need to begin with a, a certain source, right? Because we need to center ourselves around a, a single source. So let's just put this in the middle here. Oh, I gotta just get a pen. Um, and so let's just put it in the middle here. This is our source, okay? Um, you can come to this source any kind of different ways. That the, the way that I found it, that we'll see in a second is um, I just did uh, some searches in the library's um, catalog to see if I could find things. Um, maybe this source has been recommended to you by your instructor or by somebody in your class or whatever. Um, maybe you found it on a website, um, you know, you, but you have to begin with a source. And um, in order to do citation searching really effectively, it's best to have an academic source. So something that's published in an academic journal um, is gonna be the best way. You can also use books. Um, uh, that can be a, a nice sort of starting point as well. Um, so we're gonna center ourselves around this one source. Now, uh, with, with the way that um, citation searching works is we can consult this source and we can see all of the different sources that they've used, right? So in their bibliography or their reference list, it's going to point to a whole bunch of different sources that they used in preparing their article. Um, this is looking sort of backwards in time. So maybe I'll do an arrow here going backwards to sort of show um, that, we're, that we're looking at things that were written before this initial source came out, right? So we're, we're digging back in time. Now, sometimes there'll be, you know, just the previous year or whatever, and sometimes there'll be, you know, really, really old sources that they're drawing from. Um, it could, could really be anything depending on the, the context. Um, but what we're looking at here with sort of backwards citation searching is we're looking at sources that they've used in their in their references in their bibliography um, sources that were written before okay now what we can do also 
um, which is great, is we can actually look into the future. So relative to this source, there will be um, you know, a bunch of other sources that used this source, right? So, you know, after this source was published in a journal or as a book, um, in the in the future, looking forward, um, other people have used this source and included it in their bibliography, right? So um, we've got these sort of two directions that citation searching works. And so it's really, it's a nice way of kind of centering ourselves around a single sort of core important source that we found, and then looking at the things that were either um, cited by it or have cited it. All right. And so this is what we're going to look at today is this, this sort of entire experience of, um, you know, centering ourselves around a single source, looking at the different things that are sort of uh, related to it, either um, in the past or in the future. Hopefully that makes some sense. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, close out this whiteboard, come back to me. I'm, so I'm going to go into a browser here and we'll, we'll take a look at a single source. Okay, so I did this search more or less based on what we talked about um, in the last session, a, a book, sort of building a keyword search. I'm not going to go back into that because we're actually not using this approach today. We're going to we're going to uh, use a different approach entirely. Um, so looking at this source here, I, you know, I found it and I opened up the database where you can find the the full text, and um, I opened up the the full text of this article. Okay, so um, so here's an article about. Um, cats, um, how they sort of experience noises and how they use those noises to predict whether an object is going to be somewhere or not, sort of a, a cognitive look at how cats respond to noise. Um, and so here's the, the entire article here. Um, if I were studying this or looking at, you know, um, how, uh, how cats re respond to different kind of stimulus or whatever, um, then this might be a really good source to use. Uh, but coming down to the end here, there's a list of references, right? So um, in writing this article, they, they make reference to these other sources. You know, there's some stuff that's generally about how animals or mammals experience sound, or, you know, other things related to that. Um, but there's also, you know, things specific about hunting behavior in cats um, and, you know, perception, other perception things about spatial perception and that kind of thing so um you know all of these sources are things that these authors when they were writing this article thought were important enough to mention and sort of drawing major ideas for their own work from from this source so uh, you know a really straightforward way of, of using this list is to you know copy and paste any of these titles um, and search for them in the library's collections um, that's a pretty basic and straightforward way. It's a little bit old school, um, but it's a way of using this, this reference list here to generate some ideas uh, of other sources to use, right? So here's an article, Hearing Range of the Domestic Cat. Um, I haven't tried this yet, so you'll have to forgive me if it doesn't work. But um, So I'll copy um, the title. This is a really, really simple way of going about doing this. And then I'll paste it into the search here. If we want to be uh, nice and specific, we can put it in quotation marks. And that's going to search for the exact um, words in that order. Okay. So here it is. Um, we found it. It's the one result that has that exact phrase. Um, it was published in 1985 in a journal called Hearing Research. Um, we actually don't have a full text link here. It's available at other Canadian libraries. It was super important for me to get um, this article, I could uh, request it through interlibrary loan here. Well, the link's not coming up, but um, usually under access options, there's an option to request through interlibrary loan. Um, that's not the case. I'm not, you know, uh, really attached to using this source, uh, but this is an example of how you can kind of track down uh, something from a bibliography um, using a, a more or less kind of manual method, you know, just copying and pasting the title. You can do that for, for any of these sources, right? It's not a super long list. And um, you'll find that academic sources often have very, very long and detailed bibliographies. They'll use, you know, 50, you know, 100 different sources 
um, in, in a particular article. Um, this one's a little bit shorter, which is, makes it a little bit easier to use. Um, yeah, so that, that's the one direction, it, like in, in terms of uh, looking at the sort of different ways to turn a source into other sources. Here we're using backwards um, citation searching. We're looking into the past. What sources did this article cite? Um, so that works really well. Now, in terms of the other direction, it's not as straightforward, right? Because when this was published, this article, um, the authors didn't know who would subsequently publish it. They couldn't put that in a list of references, right? Because those those were only exist in the future, right? So um, we're going to need some kind of tool to, to make that work. Um, there's a couple of um, good tools that you can use that I can recommend. A lot of databases will do this for you, um, but some of the more um, well-known ones that, that do this really well um, are Web of Science, which is a database we subscribe to that you can access through the, the library's um, databases. Maybe I can just show that quickly uh, from our homepage under databases. Um, Web of Science is listed as a popular database here in this uh, side column. So uh, Web of Science. You can click there and uh, sign in if you're off campus. It'll open up the, the Web of Science database. And all I did for this was I, I searched for the title of um, this article, and it brought up a record um, here for, for that source. So this is the one that I found. Published in 2016 in Animal Cognition is the name of the journal. Um, there's no ball without noise, cat's prediction of an object from noise. So we found it here in, in Web of Science. Um, and over in the right-hand column, we have uh, two interesting things we can use. There's uh, this number 15 references. So it's saying there are 15 um, sources that are referenced in this. Um, that corresponds to um, the, the sources listed here in the reference list, okay? And, and then above that, there's eight citations. And what that means is that there are, um, this, this article here has been cited in eight sources um, that that Web of Science knows about. Um, and if I click on the number eight there, it'll actually bring up those, um, um, those sources, right? So here we can see, we can see and understand the relationship uh, certainly between some of these. Um, this first one, socio-spatial cognition in cats, mentally mapping owner's location from voice. So I guess, you know, I, this is the first time that I've looked at this. I would have to read the abstract to, to learn a little bit more, but, you know, this, I get the sense that this is looking at sort of how, um, how cats can use, um, the sound of their owner's voice to understand kind of where where their owners are in relation to them. Um, and so, you know, other things that other sources here that, you know, found this one um, initial source about how cats perceive sound and noise, um, they, they found that useful and they that turned up in their list of references, right? So there are eight um, different other sources that uh, that used that in their reference list. Uh, here's another one about matching voice and face, right? So it's sort of, um, there's a lot here about kind of how um, animals perceive sound. Um, so that's, you know, a really great way of using this Web of Science database is looking here at the number of um, subsequent articles that have cited the source. So that's the other, the top half of that little diagram that I drew, um, you know, since this source was published, who has used it, um, which can be really useful. Um, I guess before, before I dig into uh, the next database that also does this, um, I'll just point out there, there is another option here called related records. Um, and that one's really interesting because um, what it does is it looks for sources that, ha that have a, um, common items in their list of references. So of these 15 things that were referenced in this article, are there other articles that use some of those, also use some of those 15 sources? 
and those, those are determined to be related. Um, and so often they'll be published around the same time. They don't necessarily have a direct relationship to one another in that um, they don't cite one another necessarily, but what they do is they use the same sort of sets of sources. So that can be an interesting way of exploring um, the literature using citations as well. Um, so another database that um, has this sort of um, citations or cited by feature is Google Scholar. Um, and Google Scholar, you can access Google Scholar uh, for free online. Um, one thing that I recommend always is to set up in your settings, uh, set up library links uh, to include University of Winnipeg. Um, and that way, if you find some interesting things um, in the course of your searches, you'll be able to actually uh, link through our library collections to get the full text of things that wouldn't otherwise be available for free online. Uh, so that's just a little setup tip. Um, but for anything that you find here, you know, I searched the, the title again, um, and here's the, the article with a little description of it and some links to the, the website. Um, there's this cited by 20. So it actually found in Google Scholar, they found 20 sources that have cited this source, this initial source. And again, we can click on cited by 20, and it brings up these 20 results. Okay. Um, it's interesting. You can see that there's actually crossover with the ones we found in Web of Science. It makes sense, right, that they would find the, the same things because they are objectively citing the, the same source. Um, but uh, Google Scholar seems to have found more, right? So we had uh, eight in uh, Web of Science. We had 20 here in Google Scholar. Google Scholar is maybe a little bit of a bigger um, set of sources. They include um, things that are published on university websites. Um, they may include uh, more gray literature, so things that aren't, weren't formally published, um, but sort of reports and things that, um, you know, and maybe pre-publications and things that have come out in, in less formal channels, not published in journals necessarily, but have been published somewhere um, and are considered academic. Um, so we, we got 20 results with Google Scholar, and we can see them here. Now, sometimes you'll get a source that is cited by hundreds or thousands of other sources. If it's something, say, uh, fairly old, but really, really core, like essential reading on a certain topic, you'll see that it's been cited many, many, many times. Um, and that's great. What that means is that you're just working with a, a larger set of results. It can be a little bit intimidating, though, because, you know, if, it, if this uh, source were cited by 3,000 other sources, well, that's, again, impossible for me to sort of go through um, those sources and look at each one and consider each one uh, for my own work. So um, another nice feature that we have here in Google Scholar is this little checkbox to search within citing articles. So if I check that box, now this search box here is gonna search only within, um, in this case, these 20 sources, right? So I could search for say face, right? And so of those, um, 20 sources, 12 of them have some mention of a face, right? Um, and so that's just a way of kind of helping me to narrow down the, the focus of uh, these results. Um, you know, uh, we only had 20 to start with here, so it wasn't totally necessary for me to do that. Um, but if you have a, a, you know, a large result set of of citing articles, it can be useful to search for specific concepts within them to see you know, of those which mention a certain term or a certain concept. So that's a way you can narrow it down. Um, now, an interesting thing about this approach to, to citation searching is that, um, you know, as I mentioned, it's sort of, it's got its limits. If you build out around a single source or, you know, a small set of sources, say you have three really, really good sources that are rele relevant to your topic, um, you know, you can do this sort of forwards and backwards look at the literature uh, for each of those three, and then you've kind of you've got your set, right? Um, maybe you bring in a, a few other sources from those results, but you've got like clear sort of limits to how much of this you can do without it just running away into thousands and and tens of thousands of results. Um, but there, 
is a way you can decide to, you know, keep pursuing things as, as long as you like. So, you know, here we've got a list of things um, that have cited this initial source, but we can also, for each of them, they also have a cited by, right? So uh, we can click here on cited by, and it brings up now in this case, the 26 um, sources that cited this one, right? Um, and of course, the more and more you do that, um, the, the closer to the modern, the, the current day you get, right? Because um, we're going into the future each time, each step, we're getting closer and closer to today. Um, and also, you'll, you're likely to sort of get smaller and smaller sets of results as you do that. So it's a way you could kind of take a topic to its logical sort of most current source. Um, so you can go that direction. You can also go back in time, same way, you know, consulting lists of references or bibliographies of each subsequent source. You know, you find a source in a bibliography, you go to that one, go to that bibliography, and you can keep digging into the past. So um, while it is a sort of nice, tight, limited strategy for finding information, um, it can also be as vast as you want it to be, right? And you can you can go backwards and forwards as far as you like in time. Um, so it's a really awesome strategy. Um, it's one that sometimes I think gets forgotten by people. Um, this was a strategy that had to be used before we had search systems and, and um, you know, computerized searches like we use here, um, searching for keywords and kind of digging into um, digging into the literature any way we want. Um, before we could do those combination um, keyword searches, there had to be a way to find relevant sources. And this was a major method that people used in the days before the internet, um, because you could uh, just use the bibliographies of the sources that you found to kind of stretch back and find things that it had been published that were also good. Um, so feel free to use uh, that strategy. I really encourage it, especially at times when um, you do a, a keyword search and you get you know, tens of thousands of results and you're not sure exactly what to do <laughs> with such a large list of, of uh, potential sources. Um, this is a way you can kind of, uh, as I say, sort of have a nice tight approach to things, a nice sort of limited approach um, so that you're not kind of running away from your topic too much. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful. And uh, we're going to talk in the future about, you know, other other topics, about examining academic sources and uh, making some decisions about what uh, sources to use, um, as well as citing and referencing your sources. So hopefully you can join us for those uh, future sessions. Thanks. Have a good day.